magnificent. He is mighty. He is great. He's omnipotent. He loves us. He cares for us. He wants to know that we're going to serve him. He's a great and mighty God. Let's just quickly open again the service. <laughs> Father, we give you praise today, Lord God. We thank you so much, Father God, for all that you have done for us. Lord, we ask that you keep molding us into the person that you would have us be, Father. We just give you the praise and the glory today. And Father, anything that is said today, may it bring glory to you, Father God. And may people's lives be enriched by it, Father. We just give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bam, do you have anything today? No. <laughs> Should we let them off the hook today? Yes. One yes and everybody else said no, right? <laughs> it's all right, Bam. It's okay. Uh, today, this morning, no, was it this morning? Yeah, it was this morning. I don't usually put YouTube on or anything to sit and watch it, but this morning I um, made a coffee. And I thought, I'm just going to sit and see what's going on on YouTube. And it was so funny because the YouTube came up. And I never picked this. I don't even know where it came from. But it was about five men that were climbing. I guess it was like Mount Everest or some of the big mountains. And uh, I thought, well, this is interesting. I like true stories, usually. Like, you know, all oh, the murder and who did it and why did they do it and... You know, what, how did they get caught and how much time did they get? That's what I like. But this was totally different. And so I thought, well, Ann, you need a change. So we'll just drink our coffee and we'll watch this. And so it was, it was kind of different because here was five men from all different types of backgrounds. They were all good friends. One was married and had a baby. The other one was just, you know, got a new job. It was all these little things. And they were all set to climb this big mountain. Mm -hmm. And so they got all the way up, all, almost to the top. And then they said, oh man, we made it. Like we're almost to the top. We're almost to the top. So what we're going to do is we're maybe just going to camp for the night. You know, and then in the morning we'll get up early. And we'll get up right up to the top and we'll take some pictures and we'll do all this kind of stuff that's really nice. And they were so happy. And all of a sudden, there was an avalanche come. And it came right out of the blue. Like it was, everything was sunny and, and everything was fine. And all of a sudden, it was just like, is that snow coming down? Like, is that a, what is this going on? And all of a sudden, this stuff just started flowing, this, the snow. And they were in a mess. Well, it just kind of passed. <laughs> And then all of a sudden they said, wait, 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 there's, where's our friend? One of the guys was missing. And the other one, they said, oh, he got knocked down. He's over here. He's all right. But they're kind of like, where, where is he? And then they said, well, he, when, it, when it started to come, he was over here. So let's get over there. Well, you know, they saw his arm or his leg sticking out or something. And they started digging frantically, frantically to pull him out of this. And... They did, and they're saying, oh, good, we got him, you know? And they could see that their other friend on the other side was alive. Well, anyway, they're saying, wait a minute, he's not moving. He must have got, he must have got knocked unconscious. So let's, let's just go over and hear. The other guy was like a paramedic, and he went down and he said, wait a minute, there's no breath. There's no breath. Come on, let's start, you know, they do the, what do they call that, where they beat on the heart? And they started pounding. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And breathe again. Nothing was happening. Nothing. They tried and they tried and they tried. And he was dead. So they, they just kind of looked at each other. And the tears were welling up inside of them. And they're like, oh, no. My friend, our friend, is gone in an instant. They said, wait a minute, wait a minute, our other friend on the other side, like we saw him alive, but there's no voice, there's no nothing coming from him. And they go running over to him and hear part of a, a tree that had come down had went right across his one leg. 
So he's in total pain, and they get the, the log up, and they start, you know, they start working on his leg, and they realize that it's totally smashed. Just above the knee, it's smashed. And so they're like, what do we do? We're like, at least, um, I think they said a kilometer or a mile away from where they had set up camp. And they said, what do we do? What do we do? What? We can't. They went to move him and he screamed in pain. And they're saying, oh my God. And then there's no reception up that far. So they couldn't pick up, you know, it's so easy to pick up a cell phone, isn't it? And say, well, we'll dial this number, we'll dial that number, we'll do this. There was no reception. And they're like, what do we do? What do we do? And so they decided to make a kind of a bed thing and get him back to the camp. Well, they thought, oh, this is going to be really hard because it's kind of a flat. They said if it was even downhill, it would have been easier. But because it was flat, it was even harder because the snow with it being from the um, avalanche was just, they didn't know how deep it was. They didn't know if they were gonna walk into something and be crushed themselves. And, but they started and they got them back, but then they didn't get back till late that night. And then they had the whole night to go and they're sitting there saying, what do we do? And the guy is, is he can't move. Like he's just in terrible pain. And so they're like, wait a minute. The other guy was the guy that had some of the rescue equipment. So then they hike it back to him that had passed away and they got his bag and they brought it back and then they go in this little makeshift tent that they had and they try and they took this guy's pant leg off and, and he was losing blood, he was dying. And they said that it was terrible. It was a terrible thing to see that their friend now, they've already lost one, but now they're going to lose another one if something desperately doesn't happen. So anyway, at the end of the story, they ended up, the two guys started to ski back down the mountain, and it took them four hours to get back to their snowmobile. Then it took them another hour from the snowmobile to the head camp, and then they were able to have some reception on their phone and get some help up to get this guy. He lost half of his leg, but he survived. And the, you know, they were sad that they had lost one friend, but it could have been so much worse. And what I thought about was our walk with Jesus Christ. Sometimes we say, oh, we're going to climb this mountain. We're going to get up to the top. In our Christian walk, we are going to make it. We're not there yet, but we're on our way, and we are going to make it. And then we start out. And then all of a sudden, an avalanche comes. <clears throat> could be anything. Could be anything that's totally devastating in your life. And you're just totally, totally washed out. Some of us fall apart and die. Amen. Some of us do. Some of us are just injured. And we might never recover from it. And others are okay, but we still have a struggle Amen. to get back to the place where we were. And I thought about it, and I thought, Lord, you're so amazing. Because you said, I will never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Amen. So they said the one great thing that they found was when they heard the, the uh, helicopter, you know, the blades making that little rumble noise. They said when they were laying, and the guy was talking afterwards that had lost his leg, and he said, I thought I was going to die. He said, I thought I was going to die, but I heard the sound. I heard the sound of the, the helicopter, and I knew I was going to be rescued. And how many of us put ourselves in a situation, and we say, oh, how did I get in this situation? I just was going to do this. And I didn't know that the avalanche was coming. And I didn't know that all this was going to come my way. And I was going to fall. And I was going to injure myself. Or maybe I didn't even know how close to death I really was. How many of us do it? And we always forget that the helicopter, who is Jesus, is right there. And he says, I'm going to pull you out of this. And they airlifted him. They got him to the hospital. And Jesus does that for us. 
You know, we as human beings, we always get ourselves in situations. If you say you don't, you're lying, because we all do. Sometimes we know we're getting into them, and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just get into it. And then we, we realize we're injured. Or maybe we've lost something. Amen. That guy lost his life. Maybe we lose something. And we say, Lord, 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 what have I done? I just came out to have fun. I just came out to climb this mountain with some friends. And yet I didn't know the avalanche was coming. And many of us, you know, we live our daily life and we don't see that disaster could come our way. Amen. And it could take a leg. Mm -hmm. It could take a loved one. It could take our finances. <coughs> it can rob us of our joy. Mm. And I could go on and on and on. And what is the secret? The secret is staying focused. Preparing. Now those gentlemen also said, you know, we didn't really prepare for an avalanche because, you know, we really didn't think it was coming. Because it had never, you know, the, the weather or something said sunny for the next week. There's no, you know, no this coming and no that coming and everything is cool. So just go on up there and have fun. And that's what they did. So they didn't bring all the medical stuff that they needed, that they should have brought. They didn't. Because they thought everything was going to be fine. And that's what happens to us as Christians. Is everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. We don't need to prepare. Because it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And yet the truth is, it's not going to be okay. The Lord says to prepare, prepare your heart, prepare your soul, <laughs> prepare everything around you because today might be your last day. It might be, you don't know. We have no guarantee. We have no guarantee. <laughs> and if it is your last day, where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Are you going to be like, you know, I thought about the guy that was killed. And I thought, did he have time to cry on Jesus? Did he have time? Maybe he never had the time because it happened so quickly. Or maybe he did. Maybe like, Lord, save me. Maybe he did, but maybe he didn't. And the thing is, we've got to be ready We've got to get everything together in our lives and prepare. Prepare for eternity. Oh, but Ann, I'm a good person. Man, I come here every Sunday. Yeah, I come to eat. But I mean, I still come here and I listen to you. I listen, and, and you know what I do too is I help. I help take the, the tablecloths off the table. I help a little bit when I'm here, so I'm really a good person. I don't have to do that, you know, but I do it. And you say, that's nice. But if Jesus came back today, would we be ready to say, here we are, Lord? Or would we look around and see all these empty shoes? <laughs> and all these clothes laying around and say, what happened? We had a storm or something? It's like, whoops, did Jesus come back and I missed him? When I was a little girl, I was about nine, ten years old, and I remember coming home from school, and the first thing I used to do was open the door and yell, Mom! I don't know, you probably did, but it was just like, you were just like me, and you'd open the door, Mom! And you'd stand a second, and if there was no answer, wow, you panicked, I panicked. And I remember this one day, Mom! It was nothing. And I thought, oh no. The first thing I thought of is, did Jesus come back and I'm left? And I run all through that house, every room, knocked on the bathroom door, mom, mom, where are you? And I could feel myself getting like, oh no, like what's going on? And I remember saying, oh my God, where, where is she? Jesus, did you come back and leave me? Did you forget about me? I'm just a kid. And that's what I thought. And it's like, Lord, 
And then all of a sudden the back door opened and in come mom. And I said, oh, mom, you're okay. And she says, what are you talking about, Ann? And I said, I thought Jesus came back and I got left. Now, maybe you don't think like that. You might not think like that, but I do. I do. And this morning, when I saw that on television this morning, I started to cry. Because I thought how important our life is and how important the things that we go through. It's serious. It's serious. Now, everybody sits here and we all smile and we all eat and we say how good the food is and we thank everybody for helping. And then we go out those doors and we each go to our own place. <laughs> We each go to our own place. And we might go home and we might sit alone. Or we might sit with other family. We might sit and watch something good on TV. Or we might not, you know. But the thing is, if Jesus came back today, are you ready for him? What if he does come back today? You know, we, t we see all this garbage. I don't even go on Facebook much anymore, except to advertise something or to say a little bit about the ministry. But there's all this, you know, they're mad at Obama, and they're happy with Trump, and then they're happy with Obama, and they're mad at Trump. And then Melania is just not like Michelle was, and Michelle wasn't like Melania was. And I am so tired of it. I'm so tired of it because the Bible tells us to pray for those in authority. That's even the police department. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's deep. <laughs> but it's true. We were supposed to pray for those in authority over us. And, you know, you just say to yourself, well, okay, Lord, I'll try. You know, I'll try. And some of us do, and some of us do try. But what if Jesus came back today? Would you be ready? Well, Ann, what do I do to really get ready? Like I read my Bible once in a while. I pray once in a while. Well, every night I kind of pray. And what do I really do to get ready to go to be with Jesus? And the Lord says, believe on me and you'll be saved. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay, I'm saved now, but now what do I do? Well, when you do that, you got to know who you're dealing with. I know I was always the type of person, i got to know who I'm dealing with. Sometimes I play the game, and I'm real, oh, not so much now, but I used to play the game, and I used to think, well, I'll be really nice to them, and blah, 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 and I'll find out all about them. And then when I find out about them, I know who I'm dealing with, so I'll be cool. Same with Jesus. If you really want to serve Jesus, you got to find out about him. What makes Jesus tick? Huh? What makes him tick? What can I do for him? What did he do for me? He gave his life for you. He stood in your place. He shed his blood so that your blood wouldn't have to be shed. He paid the price. There is a price for your eternity, and he paid that price. Nobody else. Your mom couldn't have stood in the way and said, but Lord, that's my son or that's my daughter, and, and you know, they're good. They were good kids. Okay, I failed a little bit, but they're good kids, and I stand in proxy of them, Lord God, and the Lord says, they're 41 years old. Come on. They're old enough to give an account for themselves. And they keep turning their back on me. And they keep saying, well, you know, it's just a little sin. It's a little white lie. It's only a little white one. <laughs> There's no white lies. Well, I'm just kind of sugarcoating things so people don't get upset. Nah, it's either the truth or it's nothing. And I don't know if some of you are like this, but... I sometimes think, am I going to be in the same situation today in 10 years from now? Or five years from now, let's say. Am I still going to be doing the same thing? Am I still going to be in the same split place spiritually that I was? I hope not. 
Because the Lord says, if you draw close to me, I'm going to draw close to you. And when I draw close to you, i got great plans for you. Great plans. Nobody can steal you from my hands when you give me your life. Is that right? It is. But you got to surrender. Most of us don't like to surrender because it makes us feel like we're a wimp. I always was like, don't try to tell me what to do. Or I don't have to live that way because of this and this and this. But Jesus says, you come to me just as you are. Let me do the work inside of you. If some people come to you as Christians and say, well, you got to quit this, you got to quit this, you got to quit this. Just tell them, listen, I got Jesus inside of me now, and he's doing a number on me, and I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to keep reading my Bible, and I'm going to keep praying, and I'm going to keep doing all the things I'm supposed to do, and he is going to deliver me one day. You may get kicked out of church like I did years ago. They came and told me, Ann, you got to leave. I was high, sitting in the back seat. I thought that's where you went to church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that's where you went for yeah. safety. Yes. I went, not my church. They knew me too, because I had been there for a lot of years before. And you know what I said? You don't know what you're sending me out to. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't care. That's what they said. They said, we don't care because they said, we don't want the church interrupted. And what had happened was the guy that I was staying with had beat me and beat me and beat me. And I had went into the church higher than a kite, sat in the back seat just to get away. And that usher, they even stopped some of the service. <laughs> they even stopped some of the service. And the usher came to me and said, you got to leave. you got to leave. you got to get out of here now. I said, what? You don't know what you're sending me out to. We don't care what we're sending you out to, Ann. You've got to go. Because I could hear him in the back, walking back and forth. I thought, oh, man, I just put my foot through that door and my hair got yanked and, and dragged outside and beat up. But, you know, I had the opportunity about five years later, six years later, when I was clean, to go into that church. And I was just waiting for them to say, do you have a testimony? Oh, Does anybody yes, have a testimony? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so my old stubborn way said, uh-huh, I got a testimony. So I got up and I stood up and I said, I wanted to thank Jesus for coming into my life and for helping me. And I said, I stood in here one day with all of you. And I said, I love you, don't get me wrong. Right. <laughs> but I said, you kicked me out to the streets. And I said, you went back about your merry little old way with your church service. I got beat up really bad that night. And I thought I could come here and have some protection. And they're like, oh! <laughs> and then I said, you didn't even hug me when I walked in. Because you knew I was high and you didn't want to get too close just in case some of the fumes came off of me on your clothes or something. And I says, I needed you then. <laughs> and you know, I could never figure that out why they did that. But I, I told them, I said, you know, I said, Jesus was there for me. And Jesus got me out of that situation. But I said, I'm only standing up today not to condemn any of you because you don't know. But I'm standing here to tell you, the next girl or the next man that walks in here that is drunk or high or dirty and stinky and they got a runny nose or they puked all over their clothes, go up and give them a hug and say, we love you. Don't sit in the back seat. Come on up and sit a little bit. Because if Jesus loves us, you got to love us. And you know, the thing was, the thing was, after the service, they all come up with their hands out. <laughs> and it felt so good to say, I don't need your hugs right now. Because Jesus hugged me that night. That night that I had the two bloody eyes and bloody nose and black eyes and face all swollen up where nobody could even recognize me. Jesus was there for me that night, and I'll never forget it. I don't need your hugs now. So I say to myself, okay, if Jesus is with us, what's our job? 
Our job is to show the love of Jesus to other people. Am I right? Yeah, yeah but Anne, I don't like them too much. Oh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't care for people either. <clears throat> kind of a loner. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Jesus says to go forth in his name and tell people about him and make disciples of other people. So in other words, it's not to go out there and point a finger and say, I saw you smoke crack last night. Oh, you came out of the bar last night and you were drunk. You can't be living like that. Who do you think you are? It's not to do that. It's to say, hey, man, I love you because I remember being in that situation. I remember wanting to someone to reach out to me. They never did to me, but I'm reaching out to you now because Jesus Christ is the answer. People would say to me, Jesus Christ is the answer, Ann. And I think, how? And I never knew. I was raised in church. I still didn't know. Yeah, well, Jesus is the answer. You just got to put your trust in him. I tried. I failed all the time because I did not know. But I learned that he is the answer to our problems, and he uses other people that really love you. He uses their hands. He uses their feet. He uses the kind words that they say. He uses the love that they show to bring us closer to him. And if, like I say, if you're in a place and somebody's condemning you, shake your head and walk away. Because that's not what the Bible says. Now I've heard people in the Bible that have read the Bible say, oh yes, yes, we have to judge the good from the bad and we have to do this and then we have to do that. Well then start in your own life. Start in your own life. Don't start in your brother or your sister's life. You want to follow Jesus, you start judging yourself. Lord, is this the right thing to do? And I can guarantee that little small, still voice inside of you is going to say, and you know it's the wrong thing to do. Yeah, but God, maybe just one more time. God says, no, it's the wrong thing. <coughs> Surrender to me and let me let you live. God is good. Is there anybody that needs to know Jesus Christ today? If Jesus came back right now, would you be ready for him? Would you go to heaven? No. Who said no? Somebody say no. I said no. Well, you better get your buns up here than ask them to forgive you. Don't be sitting there putting your hand up. Get up here and pray. We need some men. Bam, come on up, honey, and pray with this guy. I'm going to need like two weeks from now. Come on. Two weeks in a row. You've got to make that decision. And you've got to stand there strong. Do you want to pray with them, Pam? Father God, we come to you right now with our hearts bowed, Father, and asking you, Father, to have mercy on us. Forgive us, Father, for the things that we have done that is not like you. We ask you, Father, to change our hearts, to change our minds, Father. Lead us. Teach us how to be men of valor, Father. Father, teach us how to follow your will and not the will of ourselves, Father. We ask you to take that pride, Father, and those other things that are not of you and cast them down, Father. We ask you to replace them, Father God, with love and the other things that you represent, Father. Whatever it is, Father, that is bound in us, we ask you to take it away, Father. We ask you to use us as mighty men for your purpose, Father. To be with us, Father. To show us, Father. To guide us. We ask, Father, that you be the foundation that helps us to build ourselves, Father not the foundation that is made of sand where when the winds and the storms came, Father, that it crashed, but that foundation that was built on stone, Father, that when the winds and the tornadoes and all those things called, that we stand, Father, like men of honor, like men of God. Father God, we just continue to ask you, Father, to come in we lay down our, ourselves, Father, 
and we invite you in, Father, to take control of our lives. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to love. Teach us how to read your word, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's just ask for a blessing. Errol, would you like to just ask the Lord to bless this food? We got an upcoming man here that's going to be up here one day. Amen. Go ahead. Lord, please help. Please bless this food. And um, please be with my friend Dave. And, uh, he buried his, buried his wife uh, Lindsay, last Thursday. And uh, please give him comfort. Amen. Thank you. God is good.